Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH. Today, we're gonna talk about some of the hardware announcements that came about during the NVIDIA GTC 2020 number two or October. I don't know what they're gonna call it, but at least this is the second GTC of 2020 and NVIDIA had a number of hardware announcements and they're actually enough that I really thought, hey, maybe we're gonna go do a video. On our YouTube channel, we normally do reviews, but I did wanna kind of provide a lot of these announcements to our small but growing YouTube audience. The first announcement we want to talk about is the launch of two brand new GPUs for the pro visualization market. Now there are two different GPUs. Now the first GPU is the NVIDIA A40, and this uses a passive cooler. It's a 300 watt GPU with 48 gigabytes of memory. And this is a big GPU and meant to be a very high end GPU for the data center that sits below the NVIDIA A100. Instead of using HBM2 memory, it's using GDDR6. NVIDIA typically will go and launch their high-end GPUs first and then kind of fill out their stack, and that's exactly what this is. And a really good use case for something like the NVIDIA A40 is there are a number of providers or VDI providers out there or professional workstation in the data center providers that actually go and put GPUs into either servery workstations or just servers, they put them into the cloud or into remote data centers, and then they have professional users log on and they can do things like have accelerated CAD CAM sessions all remotely. The benefit for IT organizations is that it's way easier to manage project files, it's easier to manage all of the GPUs and the expensive hardware and keep them all in one place. And so that tends to be a really popular solution and that is a big bastion of what NVIDIA sells these types of GPUs. Now that's the passively cooled unit. On the flip side, we have the NVIDIA RTX A6000. Now, something interesting about this is this is actually a very similar GPU. It uses faster memory, and it's an actively cooled unit, which means that it's more appropriate for things like a desktop workstation where you don't necessarily have the server chassis airflow. So you need that extra airflow from an active fan. Now, something really interesting about this GPU is that it was originally came to us and it said that it was going to be the NVIDIA Quadro RTX A6000. But then just before the launch, we got a note in the evening saying, hey, actually, we're going to drop Quadro from the branding. And so I sent a note to NVIDIA and I said, hey guys, is that true that Quadro, why are you guys doing that? Are you just not gonna use Quadro anymore? And NVIDIA confirmed to STH last night that indeed Quadro was being dropped from future products. And this is very similar. We've had the NVIDIA grid actually kind of in this space where NVIDIA, you had a grid product. We actually looked at, you know, a whole bunch of the M40 products. And that is a good example of where NVIDIA dropped that product line from their naming. And then last year, we actually saw the Tesla name dropped because NVIDIA said that it was too confusing with the car company Tesla. So they dropped the Tesla brand for the data center GPUs. And so now Quadro is being dropped. I actually think that that's really interesting because the Quadro brand to me feels like it's more of a consumer. It's not necessarily maybe a professional thing, but it's something that people actually touch. People recognize in their system that they have Quadro GPUs, whether that's a small, tiny, mini micro node like the Lenovo ThinkStation P320 that we looked at with a Quadro, low-end Quadro 35 watt GPU, or it's a high-end GPU like the dual Quadro RTX with NVLink set up that William looked at on the STH main site. People feel and see the Quadro brand. And so hearing that NVIDIA is retiring it is kind of a bummer actually. Personally, I feel kind of bummed that the Quadro brand is going away. I kind of feel an attachment to it like GeForce, but I'd love to hear what you guys think. So if you like Quadro and you think they should have kept it, or if you didn't like Quadro and you think, hey, yeah, let's get rid of it. Why don't you go put that in the comment? I'd love to hear what you think. Now, at this point, you may be a little bit bummed about the Quadro name and that kind of going away, but something that has shown up recently is the fact that we have these awesome STH t-shirts and now I'm wearing the dark gray t-shirt and you can actually find our Teespring shop down below. We get a little cut of a sale. I think YouTube and Teespring get a cut of the sale as well. But you know, if you want some STH merch, check out the STH merch site down below. The next announcement that we want to cover was the Jetson Nano two gigabyte model. Now, one of the problems that NVIDIA has faced kind of in the embedded and that kind of edge market is the fact that it has created some really cool Jetson products. Now, these are ARM-based single board computers and they also have NVIDIA graphics. The NVIDIA Jetson Nano was a four gigabyte model that used Maxwell graphics. Sitting one above that in the stack is really kind of the TX, which was a Pascal generation. And then we have the Xavier NX, which is the Volta generation. We just had an article that Brian did on the STH main site, talking about some of the differences and getting hands-on with those. By moving the Jetson Nano from four gigabytes down to two gigabytes, NVIDIA is able to lower the cost of production and price these things at only $59. And so that puts it really right in the wheelhouse of what a Raspberry Pi is. Now, the Jetson Nano has a pretty good 
ecosystem for development, but I actually think that the Raspberry Pi is actually easier to develop and work for. But on the other hand, you get the Maxwell GPU, so you can actually run CUDA. You can use this for something like if you had a pro project with a robot, or maybe you had a project just kind of doing video analytics on a manufacturing line, you want to do something just kind of fun. That's a really good use for a Jetson Nano. And at $59, it's really inexpensive. One thing I'm a little bit worried about, we are going to do a review of the Jetson Nano 2 gigabyte, but something I am worried about is just the fact that you don't have a lot of memory in that kind of footprint. And so we'll see how that impacts. The next hardware announcement that we want to talk about is the NVIDIA Bluefield 2 re-relaunch. Now, last week at VMworld, we had Project Monterey. And as part of that, one of the lead partners on the hardware side for VMware's ESXi on ARM on these things called DPUs was actually NVIDIA with their Bluefield 2 product. And in fact, I was actually at the Bluefield 2 launch at VMworld 2019 at the Moscone Center. So I actually saw the product get launched in like over a year ago. And then NVIDIA launched it again last week at VMworld. And then they're launching it again at GTC 2020 number two. What can you do? Now, if you don't know what a DPU is, we actually have a video that hopefully is going to show up on a card over here, which talks about what is a DPU and we'll go, kind of go into that. It's really kind of an edge processor that brings ARM cores, networking, and some PCIe connectivity to the edge. And that allows you to separate your data plane and your control plane with your application plane. It's very common in cloud providers like AWS has a DPU solution with their Nitro NICs. And so we're going to see more of this in data centers in the future. What is new for GTC 2020 is that we have a Bluefield 2X. Now, this takes the Bluefield 2 NIC and then adds onto it a GPU. So the NVIDIA saying that this is an Ampere GPU. And there are some subtle differences between this card and the NVIDIA EGX A100 that we saw at the Ampere launch. And specifically, what we see is we see things like out-of-band management ports. And also, instead of just having the ConnectX 6DX networking from Mellanox, we have the full Bluefield 2 solution. Another hardware announcement was actually tied to that because there are AGX AI stations for the edge. And NVIDIA's idea is basically you could take these types of, you know, Bluefield 2X GPU and DPU combo cards, and you can actually put them into edge servers and then run them in things like factories if you want to go build an intelligent factory. That's how you get that low latency, high bandwidth connection at the edge. The other really cool thing that I think a lot of people missed was that NVIDIA actually showed off their roadmap for Bluefield. And we covered Bluefield 1 back in 2017. It was really kind of more of just a storage product. Bluefield 2 is kind of the first one where we're really kind of seeing this as a real DPU type product. And one of the things that you notice with Bluefield 2 X is that you have the DPU and you have the GPU that are connected by PCIe by 16 and PCIe Gen 4 by 16 connection between the two of them. In Bluefield 3, it looks like we're still going to have this idea of having a DPU, but then we're also going to have a next-gen GPU and a next-gen DPU with higher speeds. My guess is that this is a 2022 product from the roadmap, and my guess is that that means there's also a PCIe Gen 5 product. And so we would expect a new generation of NVIDIA GPU to take advantage of PCIe Gen 5. And we would also expect that we would have a new generation of network adapter because you can't run 400 gig per second networking off of a single PCIe by 16 Gen 4 slot. On the other hand, you can run it on a PCIe by 16 Gen 5 slot. So that's kind of why we think this is going to be a PCIe Gen 5 generation and look out for that across both the DPU products as well as GPU products. PCIe Gen 5 will also bring things like CXL or Compute Express Link, which will completely change a lot of the server architectures as we see it. And so there's a lot of interesting synergies there. If you saw our 2021 Intel Ice Pickle piece, you might know a little bit more about why we think CXL is going to be very disruptive. And although there is that Bluefield 3X with the link between the GPU and DPU, what really is interesting, I think at least, is the Bluefield 4. Now, this one does not have a link drawn between the GPU and DPU. So my theory is that that's actually a unified product, whether that's a single SOC or single chip, or it's actually just a you know highly packaged solution, kind of like a modern GPU is where you have multiple tiles or what have you. What they're showing is that it's no longer a PCIe connection. It's actually an integrated package, and that's what's on the roadmap. So if you're thinking about NVIDIA's endgame or one of the big products that NVIDIA is thinking about, hey, this is definitely one of them because that is definitely the reason that they bought Mellanox. But there is one other feature in Bluefield 4 that I personally think is really exciting. And that is a line that says that the spec int performance of this Bluefield 4 solution is expected to be 1000. Why this is interesting is that's effectively three of the highest end mainstream CPUs that you can get today, which is the AMD Epic 7742 in terms of integer performance. And, you know, 2023 is actually only about three years away. And so the idea that you can consolidate three sockets worth of 
AMD Epic CPUs into a single DPU that also has all the networking built in and the GPU, I think is just phenomenal. And with a spec in rate, that's three times what a 64 core processor is today. Remember those AMD Epic 7742s that are going in today will still be in their life cycle by the time Bluefield 4 launches according to this roadmap. And what that basically means is that you can start consolidating your workloads directly onto these DPUs instead of going to the CPU. That is an absolutely amazing hardware solution for the data center. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this. We just talked about some of the big announcements at GTC 2020 number two. If you like this video, let us know in the comments. If you think things like, hey, maybe Nvidia should have kept Quadro, we'll put that in the comments, why not? And if you made it this far, why don't you click on subscribe, turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with new videos. As always, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.